Okay, guys. Mercedes hatch. This is the second A-Class, we all know, right? Huh? And coincidentally, we have a first generation 1 Series here. Now, who, who is the first brand that goes into small hatchbacks for, from a premium brand? The first premium brand that goes into a small hatchback is actually Audi with the Audi A3, okay? So the Audi A3 debuted in year 1997 or 98, or was it 96? Okay, I couldn't recall. But it was such a success that BMW immediately embarked onto the 1 Series and then Mercedes into the A-Class and now it has become a default form factor that everybody needs to go into. Even Volvo has the V40. But that was not Volvo's first time to create a hatch because back then Volvo wasn't truly a luxury brand anyway. Um, that's the new A-Class. At first, when I saw it, I never really liked the front. Uh, but after this, and then after looking, looking at the CLS, I kind of like it because it looks like the CLS. You see what I'm going on here? Mercedes intentionally designed the A-Class to look like the CLS because that gives you a sense of family linearity. You felt that your car truly belongs in the sporty, dynamic range of Mercedes-Benzes and not the Uncle C or E or S-Class uh, direction. That means the family tree of Mercedes-Benz has branches of luxury and opulence and comfort and then the other branch of uh, dynamic, sporty and all that. And that's the reason why they designed the A-Class to look exactly the same as the CLS and of course the AMG GT4 okay so in terms of exterior it takes a time it takes some time to warm up to uh, versus the previous A class because the previous A class is so good looking everybody loves it at first glance okay this one takes some time for you to like it it needs to grow on you okay it has grown on me over the past few months because when I saw it, I hated it, right? I was like, ew, it's ugly, blah, 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 blah. Now, look at the front. Side air intakes, there are none. All it does is just some grills, some lines to draw air to the side. And then they can tell you things like, oh, the air actually comes out here and uh, helps in aerodynamics and all that. The rims, the, these rims are designed for aerodynamic as well. Notice this huge part. So they successfully made a rim that is 18 inch to look like a 16 inch rim. Okay. Then we have this one, which I really like Mercedes' treatment because uh, look at the current C-Class and the 3 Series. You have a line that cuts across, right? Because for pedestrian crash protection, you need to have plastic in front, metal at the back. But Mercedes just did a clamshell. A clamshell that hides the cut line okay that's what they do in that and um, so it's distinctive it is distinctive because it doesn't look like any Mercedes out there now and it kind of forces you to not feel that it's awkward because the CLS looks the same okay let's go to the sides look at this one rubber strips run all the way up here I don't know why Mercedes never really went into the kind of welding construction that Audi and Volkswagen is using seamless welding so Audi and Volkswagen is able to weld the roof to the pillars without any trace so that they do not need a rubber strip to cover the top if I have one nearby I will show you uh, so far none okay here's the back of the new A-Class it is a direct copy of the Kia Cerato, right? Everybody says that, right? But let me tell you, it's not a copy because even the Kia Cerato or this, these are what we call uninspired design. There's no direction to begin with. It's just some design instead of a squared off stuff, okay? So what they did is uh, they have this part at least. You look at Audis, they start, they start bending in. Actually, Audi invented this, this, this kind of design direction where this part begins to bend in ever so subtly so that you don't feel that there is an actual place to put your plate number, which is ugly, you know. It sort of 
folds in so that the the lamps actually fold actually sort of floats on top you notice that okay this kind of design actually started by Audi back then because Audi is obsessive with reducing the lines that runs at the back but having said that triangular rear tail lamps and then it's exactly the same as a CLS again so that there is a sporty lineage okay have a look inside it's a decently sized boot it is even larger than that of the uh, Subaru XV I would say and this boot size is uh, similar to the uh, Proton X70 if I'm, if I'm not wrong or maybe just slightly smaller okay so a big boot for a small car and this round the A-Class has improved a lot in terms of packaging see the previous A-Class right everywhere is just tight but this round is spacious it's okay to sit inside let me come in here sorry it's a bit dark this is gonna rain outside so uh, 5 foot 11 I have a palm look at that I have a palm of headroom and I still have a palm of uh, knee room so as a 5 foot 11 um, is spacious enough at the back here but it does feel a bit claustrophobic because of these sporty looking seats they basically took out quite a bit of uh, visibility and then uh, they close the doors it is all right it's a small car at the end of the day right but i have to say the build the build at the back here is it's not reflective of what a mercedes-benz can do you know this part looks cheap uh, it's, it's, it's a nice it's, it's okay when you run your fingers around but a Corolla is okay as well a Civic is okay as well but this is a Mercedes-Benz right and you have this part you see the whole thing moves as a door handle door handle needs to be exceptionally solid try uh, Audis or uh, Porsches right exceptionally solid this thing just the whole thing just moves and then uh, let's have a look at the back here the armrest pretty all right decent okay. basically it's decent I would say it's just decent but I kind of felt that uh, they optimize a bit too much when it comes to cost especially this part no, it's just so slim to give you more room within the cabin but it's just really slim okay and, uh, and uh, opening and closing the doors they don't feel like German cars anymore they just feel like regular Japanese mass market cars even your Honda Civic doors are like that okay but nevertheless here's the door panel on pictures they look good but when you touch them especially this one they change the material last time they shared across right this one feels uh, a lot cheaper than what it used to be okay and these setting chrome surfaces I mean I'm okay with the design I'm okay with the uh, the molding points you know I mentioned about a front plastic and a rear plastic and where they meet this feels smooth enough smooth enough but I still feel it, but it's all right. This is uh, okay workmanship, I will say. But okay if it is a golf, right? But I, I think golfs are better. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at the dash, the beautiful dash. That's the uh, main selling point of this car, right? Wait, let me get the keys from Fadil. Are you going to see that? Double, double. Okay, 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 okay. okay, okay, okay. Huh. Oh, the tires. These are great tires. The uh, Hankook Ventus S1 Evo 2. Beautiful tyres. Tire Evo. Tire Evo. 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 Okay, let's start the car. Okay, I'll turn on the lights so that uh, we get to see something at least. No, no, why don't I just roll so that we get a better view of things in the interior? Yup lighting proper lighting okay first of all the stocks look at these boys here these boys here okay they feel all right to operate okay but uh it's pretty obvious that uh cost optimizations remember this used to be satin chrome right it feels so cheap now this thing it feels really cheap anyway this part as well remember in one of my videos I explained why 
Remember that? Mercedes, the strategic product planning of them involves the construction of cars as well. So when it is an A class, they have to have a big gap between the A and the C and the C to the E. So that when you sit in an A class, when you felt that, hey, it's, it's not as comfortable as my friend's C class, then it reminds you to work harder. So that when you finally bought the C class, wow, feels different, eh? Right? And then from the C to the E, wow, exceptional, right? They give you a path to upgrade yourself. They give you something to aspire to. Whereas what Volvo was doing with their XC40, XC60, XC90, they gave you everything they have. So that when you drive an XC40, in a few years' time, why would you even upgrade to an XC60? Because it feels exactly the same, the same infotainment screen. Basically, they gave you all and did not cut back on anything. And that would be a disadvantage. But they're being honest. They are like Sony Ericsson back in 90, the late 90s. Every phone that you buy from Sony Ericsson has the full features. Whereas Nokia, if you bought the cheaper ones, you go into menu, there are a lot of things that they cut out. You know, just to give you an upgrade path. Anyway, let's look at the uh, dashboard. The dashboard is beautifully designed. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, no faults with Mercedes design. They really make their interiors feel different. You hop out from an A-Class into an Audi A3 or 1 Series or Volvo you, uh, V40. You felt like you just turned back time. Uh, 10 15 years okay it feels so futuristic but i have to be honest with you the interior ambient lighting yes i have the option of toning it down but when i'm when, when some of the people they like to max it out like fadil he maxed it out when he passed me the car it is just so ostentatious okay but to each his own there is an option where you can turn it off so you cannot complain there all right it's pretty tacky i would say now this part this is the uh Controls for the aircon vents. Now the problem with this part is that imagine one long part and there are only two screws that secures this to the dashboard. And both two screws are on the same spot. That means, right, it is on the same uh, panel that resulted in the whole thing very easy to, 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 to wiggle. I'll give you an example. Let me show you now. Okay, I'll point the aircon vents away. I just press it with my finger. You see the whole thing moving? Do you see that? This is very poorly built. Okay. And I don't know whether you'll be able to see the screws because of lighting. Yeah, but they're up there. Okay. The screws are there. There's one here. There's one here. I mean, if they use four screws, okay. If they use four screws, the whole thing won't won't move like that but two is cheaper than four <laughs> anyway uh, the controls the controls are, are good it's very easy to control uh, it's a toggle switch which we saw debuting in the a3 a4 tt it's a toggle switch but the thing is you have the way to to operate this is not press in it's actually up or down and that is where it's most susceptible to movements. When you go up and down, you can see the whole thing moving. So uh, I don't really appreciate that. But I think four screws will fix that problem. Okay, instead of two. Okay, I'm nitpicking here. It's a Mercedes-Benz. You have to nitpick, right? 260,000 here. The keys, if you buy the CLS, these buttons will be gloss black. But if you buy the A-Class, it is matte plastic black. So again, this gives you something to aspire to. You want to upgrade your keys even. Okay. Now this part, the whole thing is gloss black. Now you'll be wondering why so many car makers like to make gloss black. You know, actually gloss black started as piano black. And piano black is an expensive process to paint your piano wood over and over and over and liquor and over and over and over again until you do not see all the wood patterns but all you get is a glossy beautiful surface that is made of wood but this is plastic and plastic has static right plastic generates a lot of static electricity and a lot of stuffs will stick on it so that's the bad thing about gloss black 
but gloss black looks beautiful in pictures at night because it reflects light and there is a lot of light in this car at night okay nice compartment very big this looks like a wireless charging pad but unfortunately there, there's none and uh, it's just enough for a note 8 so which is really nicely sized okay the one in the cls is just ngam ngam not enough for a note 8 <laughs> okay the usb ports i think this is too soon maybe this car is really from the year 2025 because that is a usb c to usb c port so those with uh, apple macbook you'll be happy those without you'll be sad okay uh, mercedes-benz you used to be able to take out this thing but now you couldn't and uh, this is just a bit over engineered right just to make this as a click lock and a button to release it uh, they don't need to but they did it anyway this one fantastic control oh this one this is what i mentioned just now fantastic man this thing you you're you'll be able to massage yourself without a massage seat anyway uh, look at all these controls. This is the new panel that Mercedes designed for their cars. Lovely. Uh, the, the, the materials are great. The feel, the tactile feel of the stuffs, are, everything is good. So I have no complaints here. This feels fantastic. And the graphics, the graphics are easily some of the most beautiful graphics I've seen on uh, car infotainment screens. Uh, lovely, lovely graphics. Everything feels fantastic. Uh, the graphics are fast they're crisp the haptic feedback this thing has haptic feedback and it's really really good okay even this one as well the graphics are just uh, i mean some i felt is a bit childish because it feels like playing a video game um, but nonetheless these are great graphics and the transition is fantastic so mercedes did a very very good job with their ui there and then uh, what else to show you uh, this part this part feels really cheap Okay, the, the handbrake button, um, this thing just doesn't feel like a Mercedes-Benz, huh? put it that way. And uh, this one as well, see this thing, it's loosely constructed. But again, small nitpicking complaints because there are a lot of things that they did well. Like this one, there's light coming out of the aircon vents. And these are some of the most beautiful aircon vents ever. Okay, beautiful, beautifully designed. And then of course, there's always the cost-cutting coming in All right this thing looks cheap but at least it's not flimsy like the one in mazda's you know it's cheap and small and uh why can't they do a rimless one you know but small complaints there but it's very small okay this one as well the side mirrors the side mirrors are very very tiny you are okay with this one but look at that one look at the part where it's red and then the part where it's actually the mirror they are almost 50 50 Okay, that means this whole thing occupies this much of your 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 visual real estate from your vantage point, but only half of it is a mirror. Okay, um, yeah. What else? This is all right. Sunglass holder, crucial for ladies. Oh, it's rubberized now inside. It's rubberized. They added a rubberized in C class, E class, CLS. They're all that cheap plastic. This one feels slightly better, and it's rubberized inside. But again, it's still too small for your Gucci aviators or Chanel aviators. All right, decent. Nothing special there. That's the interior of the A class. Okay. Overall, I would say, no matter what I complain, it is a big improvement over the previous one and in terms of driving in terms of power in terms of comfort everything is a big improvement but it's still no class leading here okay a uh, golf gti beats this car in every aspect in driving in comfort in everything all right um a one series in suspension and uh technology technology of this car is just i would say it's pretty surface yes you have the high mercedes thingy but other than that yes you can use high mercedes to control the lights and all that because of the the menu systems but to be honest uh, so far, I haven't tested a car's uh, voice control that can match Proton X70s, okay? So, um, yep, that's about it. I enjoy the drive. I enjoy the power. It is a very, very sporty hatchback. It's a very fast car. I can drive this car to a very, very high speed. 
which uh, is partly contributed by those great tyres as well. Hankook S1 EVO 2, great, great, great tyres. As I mentioned again, everything with the name EVO is great, okay? So uh, guys, uh, I really appreciate if you would subscribe to my videos because um, the thing is this, I get about 1.7 to 1.8 million views a month and my ratio of viewers to subscribers is so, so tiny. I only have about 50 thousand subscribers that means a lot of people do not subscribe maybe they hate me anyway so i hope you guys can subscribe don't worry nowadays when you subscribe uh, a video or a channel right you will not get the emails blasted into your mailbox immediately provided you want me to update you everything that i uploaded then you click the bell but if you do not click the bell you just subscribe it is just a reward to me thank you all right Cheers, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Remember to remember to subscribe to Fadil, to Bing, to Con. Okay, all my colleagues. Cheers. Ooh, my neighbor bought an X seventy. Ah. I don't know whether you guys can see or not the red one over there. Very far away from the wide angle screen. Anyway, um. Whoa, whoa. Here I am with the A-Class Okay And um, First thing first It is a lot uh, more comfortable than the previous um, A-Class or the first gen A-Class uh, In terms of pliancy, comfort, it is better uh, in terms of handling as well, it is an improvement too. And um, there are a lot of little features that I found out about this car. You know, see, it doesn't have massage seat, but there is a mode whereby after when you when you're feeling tired, you can activate it. Then you then you feel your seat right move a little bit it's sort of like you know raise the seat base a bit and then down and then move the lumbar a bit you know basically is to give you some movement on your body to sort of rejuvenate you this is the first time i've seen a car that simulates massage seat functions without actually having massage seats <laughs> it, and and the feeling is quite unique it's quite unique the way it sort of like oh it's very subtle i mean you, you, you can't move big you can't have big movements if not you will alter the uh, sitting position and the visibility of the driver but then it does it ever so slightly see this is the advantage of these type of um, can bus systems in cars whereby every single thing is connected to a centralized ECU and the centralized ECU's function can be improved via programming so this is what we mean by uh, cars that are high-tech versus cars that are simple simple cars would be uh, cars like the CRV the Elantra in front these are simple cars with simple architectures in terms of its wiring and its you know how the whole thing works whereas these type uh, like the BMW or the Volvo sensors all these or the Proton X70 all right Audi MMI and all that they all are able to have these kind of functions because of the underlying core of how it is wired or designed to be wired yeah but is is the a class uh, a worthy um, how do I put this uh? when it comes to the handling department sporty and all that is it arrival of the one series yet no in terms of power delivery in terms of how uh, the car juts you a bit mm, suspension and all that it is average i was i would say it certainly gives you a um, what is that it certainly gives you a sporty drive because the steering is not bad and there's loads of power and it is not a clumsy clumsy car by any measure but in terms of the coherence of how everything works together you know you see this 
this type sometimes you just want to accelerate a little bit and then the the, the, the the movement of the car versus its wheels will give you that that sensation instead of the whole car accelerating together you know it sits on its back a bit and then you bring and then it dips the front these sort of minute stuffs that uh, are, are what sets it apart from a, a really good driver's car okay but but the engine this engine is sweet man this engine is fantastic um, there is very little hesitation there is very little lag um, it doesn't really lag a lot I mean it's just it just goes very nice uh, very un Mercedes I would say um, so which is a very nice thing and just now I was in comfort now only I'm moving to sport and then uh, I'm at 40 kmh at 3000 rpm can you imagine that that means this car is ready to push any time but the the chassis of the car is not the crazy crazy that you can you, you can tell the car is holding on to dear life Nice meaning it makes me feel excited. Nice doesn't mean it is a, it is a, it is, it is that kind of balanced chassis that you just, wow, you know, like a Ford Fiesta, you know, Ford Focus, or BMW One Series, that type, that type of uh, really well tuned and engineered chassis. Yeah, but I'm nitpicking here. This does it make me feel excited? Yes, because of this power. Okay. Uh, lovely, lovely, and uh, the whole car feels very. It's like it's waiting for the next instruction. Okay, what do you, where do you want me to go? Where, where do you want me to go? Yep, it's that type of car. Okay, now I complain a lot about the interior build quality when I when the car was first launched. Okay, from pictures it looks brilliant. Uh, from the driver's seat, when you touch the steering wheel, um, the stuffs that are around you, then you'll be like, what the hell is Bobby saying? You know. Everything here feels great until you look deeper out of the uh, the uh, usual focal points of the driver. In terms of focal points of the driver, it, 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 it does it brilliantly. That's, that's why I keep saying Mercedes is very strategic and very clever when it comes to building their cars. They know where to entice you, you know, what sort of things works great in, in pictures, in photos. And uh, from there they do it, right? So, seating position is good, the uh, visibility is good, side mirror is uh, it's just agonizingly small and tiny. Um, this one is still alright because it's near you. That one, you need some time to decipher your visuals because it's, uh, it's pretty tiny and it's angular. And you have those beautiful Mercedes chrome aircon vents that reflects itself onto the side mirror when you're driving under the sun like that okay so these are things that uh, that, that, that will happen um, the screen no doubts about it is fantastic in terms of the operation of the screen I love the uh, the multi input methods that you can you mean you can operate it from your steering wheel the left touch button controls the left screen the right touch button controls the right screen and then you can touch screen you can move the stuffs with your finger and then you also have that touchpad thingy interesting everybody complained when Lexus did it right the haptic feedback touch sensitive pad but nobody seems to complain when Mercedes does it okay, it takes a little bit of getting used to but if you're well trained with Lexus's system uh, it's fine it's fine you sort of your eyes would have to understand which one is the button which which icon on the screen is the one that you should be clicking then you move your finger in that direction and then it will highlight that for you to click on too okay but again the menu system seems to me is still rather designed for the click wheel so um, I still feel that in in today's world of of, of these cars where we have touchscreen now uh, the menu system can emulate that of a smartphone instead of 
instead of the uh, the grouping type remember i mentioned germans they group their functionalities so in a click wheel system because you you are operating it in a linear method you come here first and then you go in and then you go deeper you go deeper because that is aligned with your click wheel you know you click and then you go in you select you click again you select which is rather like an ipod right an ipod you have a click wheel and then you you turn you select and then you go in you go in you go in you go deeper and deeper deeper into the menus that would be the click wheel system with the linear user interface but in touchscreen system you need to look at iPhones again instead of iPods right one specific thing is one function and it should have its own icon and once once you're used to what functions you have by scrolling just press and you directly enter it touchscreen allows you to enter a function directly instead of having to go through layers of menu so on that front only Tesla and Volvo got it right for a touchscreen system that has all the functionalities if you think about it Bluetooth pairing is supposed to be one app right uh, your phone uh, your, your contacts should be one app your tuner should be one app basically in terms of functionalities they are one singular app you don't have to group all of this into one infotainment per se or phone and media per se that's what I meant right uh, I'm not gonna delve into that for too much so in terms of the A class is it much 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 better than the previous A class yes it is the previous A class is a horrible car it looks good it looks sporty but it's just it doesn't drive exceptionally well it rides exceptionally poor that is the previous a class yes a lot of people bought it because that's the that's that's the intention of mercedes-benz <laughs> right they want people who have never owned a mercedes-benz to buy into the mercedes-benz brand and then to grow within mercedes-benz and from there they will buy C class, they aspire to the E class, and maybe one day to go GLE, GLC. You know, there are a lot of options within Mercedes uh, catalog, all right. Um, but this one is a proper, proper hatchback, family hatchback. I would dare say, you know, like a Golf, uh, like a One Series, like a Focus. It's like a, it is a. What is this foreigner doing trying to cross the road in the middle of the highway? My god, poor her. I think you see, that's the thing with Malaysia, right? They travel here and then uh, they just follow the direction, but it's not well designed as a as a city for pedestrians. So, poor her, just stranded there. Anyway, <laughs> so this is now a proper luxury car with the high tech features, uh, with the performance to match, and then yes, there's the build. There's the wheel, yeah. Uh, especially the rear part, the doors, the plastics, a lot of stuff just doesn't this this aircon control you need the whole thing moves about. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, what have I done? Ah, ah, why is it blowing hot air? No. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so the thing is uh, Um, so yeah, build quality aside, I think I'm very satisfied with the improvements of the suspension, of the power, of uh, handling, things like that. And of course, the high-tech system, very nice. Um, the price. The price is... I know it's fast, I know it has 224 horsepower, but... It is almost, almost 100,000 more than a 118i. A 118i should be about 180, and this is about 260. I know if you pay that price, um, you'll be looking at stuff like a um, Mini Cooper S, then this is definitely one where you can cross consider but interior wise the the minis are very well built these days okay they have very well executed cabins 
high quality. Last time mini cabins are just they're just beautiful but not very high quality. But the new ones, very nice. Um, but in terms of visual, remember back then you look at a mini interior, you're like, wow, it's just so beautiful. Now you can say the same thing with the uh, any Mercedes interior. Right? They are just absolutely beautiful to look at. Okay. But that price. Stiff, stiff, and then you have the A200. Uh, the A200, I've driven it as well earlier on. Uh, the 1.3 liter engine is very powerful, very punchy. But I mean, when Mercedes can't really do independent suspension exceptionally well, then they have a torsion beam in the A200. It's that car has horrible and horrible rear. Uh, pliancy and that affects how the car handles because <clears throat> um, it will bob your car around yeah. anyway that's the driving experience of the uh, A250 very fast a car that you can push and because of the way the chassis setup isn't as supremely beautifully balanced like the 1 series that means this car will make your hair stand at a much lower speed that means it gives you more excitement before you even throw yourself into uh, any troubling speeds okay and uh, there's a lot of I mean you feel alive driving this car because when you accelerate the car sits on its back you brake and then the car flips the front and then you corner it rolls a little bit and then you adjust the steering wheel you know you, the car reacts immediately so it's an exciting drive, even though it's not a uh, um, It is exciting, it is exciting It's just that it's not the type where it's like Wow, wow, the car can take it, let's give it more The car can take it, let's give it more It's not that type This is just like, wow, exciting oh, Crazy, I'm running into trouble soon oh. Yeah, that type Okay, cheers Oh, another thing. Remember I always say that Mercedes's A250 or the 250 range, uh, they generate about 211 horsepower or, the, or in this one, 224. And then uh, you have Volvos that generate uh, 252 and then um, things like that. But when it comes to efficiency, fuel efficiency, for what this car puts out, it is exceptional. It is very fuel efficient compared to Volvo's T5. There's no doubts about that. 